Hi, I'm Annie Parker and this is Source Code. This is where we speak to founders from around the world and share their amazing stories of the human stories behind their companies. Today I'm joined by David Prosser. Thank you for joining us, David. Thank you, Annie. And he is the founder of a startup here in South Africa called Community. Um, Dave, do you want to just explain a little bit more about who you are and, and what your startup does? Very good. So, um, David Prosser, uh, born uh, in a little country north of South Africa called Zimbabwe, um, and uh, got into tech kind of by accident. Um, kind of fell out of uh, 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 once I'd finished varsity, fell into a job in the tech industry and just got really lucky that I fell into the right space. And I, I worked uh, in the formal tech sector for some large software companies mm -hmm. um, for some time and then uh, 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 ended up moving into the telco space and just realized that what I needed to do was to um, create a, a, a space and a, a company uh, of my own with some partners. And yeah, that's how I fell into the startup space. Cool, and so how long has community been going for now? Um, just short of 10 years, believe it or not. Ooh, yeah. that's <laughs> a whole decade right there. Yeah, that's right, and, uh, and quite a journey it's been. And how big is the company now? So how many employees do you have? So we have about 23 employees. Um, we uh, 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 do a lot of contracting and so on. And um, we uh, now operate uh, EMEA, so um, out of the UK, UK, Middle East, Africa. Um, but uh, founded here in South Africa, um, very close to, uh, and right in the center of a, of a developing market. Um, and really a developing country over the last 10 years. So was that a deliberate choice for you to build your company in a developing market? So there, um, there was a deliberate choice and there were some choices that were pushed on us. So uh, a deliberate choice in that um, you know, it's relatively easy to build technology for developed markets. And I say relatively easy. Um, but when you take into account uh, the challenges that are faced by developing markets um, in terms of, uh, you know, the proliferation of Internet and smartphones and, you know, other uh, uh, first world technologies, we saw uh, even when we started community uh, that there would be a requirement uh, to bridge, you know, what people famously talk about now as the next billion. Mm -hmm. um, and so that connection to developing markets was important for us. Uh, in terms of building uh, uh, affordable, inclusive digital solutions that are applicable in uh, both developed and developing economies. And then the second part of it was that, you know, we had a really strong um, a network here in terms of technology skills, and it just made sense for us to, uh, uh, to start here in what was a home market for us. So you're 10 years in now. I'm sure there's been plenty of ups and downs along the way. Um, what, if anything, would you go back and do differently? Um, first and foremost, uh, not being uh, too arrogant about how great our idea was and, uh, and, and the value that we could bring to customers. So in, in, in hindsight, I would have given away the technology to our first customers in a number of segments, um, just got them to pay for the implementation services, uh, even if it, it was a, a, a free lifetime license just to get the referenceability and, and, and not so much prove to ourselves that the technology could do what we, what we claimed it could do, but to prove to the market and build out that referenceability. And the thing is, when you're building a startup and uh, 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 earning revenue and proving your business model is really important, that's a difficult choice to make. Um, but I've often thought back, and that without doubt, that's, that's the, 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 the biggest change I would have made. That's interesting. So building a company isn't just about the technology, it's, it's also about the business, the, the, the systems, the DNA of a company and the culture that you build around it. Was that something that you realized early on that you needed to, to consider um, and be thoughtful around or was it something you learned along the way? Um, I think it's something that we've learned along the way, to be honest. Um, I think early on we just thought being excellent at technology uh, and building a, a great platform would bring customers to us, um, customers and partners, and uh, in actual fact, the uh, 
as important as building great technology is building a great company, both in terms of operations, the way you engage with customers and partners. Um, you know, in, in fairness, I think maybe we fought more fights or battles along the way than we really needed to um, because we thought those were, you know, absolute must wins at that point in time. And hindsight, uh, we could have taken things a little bit, you know, some, some, some easier turns. So you've been doing this for a little while now, you know, 10 years is a long time, so, and it's hard. So what is it that keeps you going and get you jumping out of bed every day? It's the pursuit of a vision that I think we were a little bit way ahead on. Um, and uh, so what community does as an organization is uh, we uh, build and operate uh, a rapid digitization platform uh, that runs in Azure. And essentially, um, we simplify and accelerate the way that organizations build out compelling end-to-end -end digital platforms. And uh, uh, to put it simply for technical audiences, um, we're looking to democratize the skill set that's required to be able to build out these really compelling end-to-end -end digital platforms from data through operations to wraparound edge experiences. And really, you know, despite the fact that we're 10 years in and we've managed to keep going, um, we're really now getting to the point um, where worldwide the industry is, uh, has woken up to the fact that to build out these digital platforms um, that uh, 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 enable everyday organizations to operate the way that kind of large disruptive Silicon Valley companies do is complex. Um, it's difficult to, to, to acquire the skills that you need to be able to build and run these platforms, um, and it's very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we've built a, a low code, uh, a, a high automation platform um, that just makes it faster, better, more cost efficient to do this. And it really, what excites me is that every single day there's momentum. You know, um, uh, uh, we see, you know, more partners, large industry players coming on board um, uh, uh, with our propositions. Um, commercial relationships that we thought not possible, you know, six or three months ago, you are falling into place now. And that's, that's exciting. It's the manifestation of, uh, of, of many years uh, and hours of hard work. I love that because a lot of people often think that startups are overnight success stories and of course they very rarely ever are. Exactly. It's, it's many, many years of blood, sweat and tears that, that actually make this all come to fruition. So in building the company and you know, being the founder, was there anything that you weren't quite expecting or were a bit unprepared for when you, you know, sort of found some of those challenges along the way? Yes, there were many things and I'm going I'm to try and just focus <laughs> in on a few. Uh, the, the first was that, you know, when we started the company, and particularly we started the company with a, 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 a competent set of people who had industry relationships and track record. And, and uh, in, in the South African market, it, it was very difficult to raise uh, capital, VC. And so, mm -hmm. you know, at that stage, um, everybody thought that, you know, I'll just start a company because I've got an idea. Um, of course, it's going to be successful and investors are going to throw money at me. Um, but that, that, that was quite a tough thing for us. And we went through a, a phase where we actually started the company uh, uh, with a, a, a pseudo, pseudo VC involved with us. Um, and then it turned out that they couldn't quite meet their, their, uh, their, their commitments. We had to go and kind of decide to either close things up or go it alone. And we went it alone. Um, How far in was that, the, the decision? Uh, it was of about three months. Wow, uh, so quick. Yeah, it was scary. Um, so you know, what we did is uh, we went out and we closed our first three customers and uh, somehow we managed to uh, persuade them to pay us in advance and they believed in us because of our track record. <laughs> That's incredible, they and paid in advance. Yes. Amazing. Uh, yeah, thank God for them is uh, all I can say. And you know, on the journey, there are uh, many roses that fall in your path, you know, and you tend to remember the prickles, but um, uh, so, so yes, just access to capital and, and, and for, for really pretty high-grade R&D initiatives were difficult to, um, uh, 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 to, to come by. I think one of the really tough things has been uh, navigating uh, um, your commitments uh, or our commitments to people and people who have glued their own uh, uh, future uh, uh, plans and uh, uh, and livelihoods uh, to our vision mm -hmm. 
and navigating this road of being able to make sure that all stakeholders are, are adequately uh, are looked after and of course particularly your people because if, if, if you don't have your people with you, you don't have a tomorrow. Um, so there have been you know, a lot of tough uh, 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 sacrifices that have, have had to be made to make sure that our people were safe and feeling as though everything was going fine even though some days it, weren't, it wasn't. And what sort of sacrifices are we sort of thinking of here? Well, not paying yourself. Right. <laughs> I, I thought that's where you were going to go. Uh, uh, y yes. Um, uh, yeah, selling houses. Uh, wow. uh, um, uh, 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 plugging into pension funds, you know, and I'm not just talking about myself here. So th those are some of the things that it takes to grit it out. Uh, the, the good thing is that if you still believe after all of that, uh, you you've either got too thick a skin or you're onto something that's going to work out. Right. So we've touched on how you know, sort of being a founder takes its toll and, and you know, as a, as on the business side, but what about for your family? You know, what did that do and, you know, trying to build this company? How did that impact on your family as well? To find a word. <laughs> uh, euphemistically speaking, it's been challenging. Um, uh, uh, maybe closer to terrifying. Um, you know, it, it's, I think people who found businesses uh, have a certain sense of pride and commitment, uh, not just to themselves, but to others. And uh, to take your family and your partner's families on this kind of journey, is, uh, it, it's very challenging. And uh, they, they, they always sacri sacrifice with you, yeah. um, but, but it wasn't always their choice. And, uh, you know, to be honest, um, you know, I've actually had to listen very carefully to uh, people who've counseled me, you know, when I've been kind of pulling my hair out and saying, you know, why and why can't it be easier? And, and uh, uh, um, you know, that, that, that the way people have counseled me and said, you made these choices. This is, this is the choice that you made um, and you made it with free will. Um, so any choice that we make is tough, and, but it is, it is tough when it impacts those around you. I mean, and it, it, it's not just family. You know, sometimes it, there's suppliers right. um, who, who back you. Something doesn't work out with a customer. You have cash flow uh, constraints. You've got to lean on your suppliers, um, and, and uh, they help you to kind of carry things for a while. Yeah, those those have been some of the some of the the tough things. I mean, uh, in in my personal life, you know, one of the things um, that I, I, I got married uh, pretty much the same time that we were starting Community Up. Um, after having started another business before that, uh, and, um, and and we quickly had a child, and uh, my my son was uh, uh, born with a. Uh, a condition where uh, a condition called microtia and atresia, um, which is a, quite a rare condition, and uh, uh, it needed he needed very very specialised uh, care um, and surgeries down the line, and uh, so I needed to go and spend quite a lot of time in California with him to get this done. You know, as a family, we went over twice, um, and then I took him there last year. You know, and uh, uh, you know, um, thank God, thank the universe. Um, you know, that's all worked out well. In amongst building, you know, a, a business uh, with big R and D commitments, building relationships with, you know, big multinational companies like Microsoft, that's and somehow it, it 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 is. So uh, when you think back on it, it is, um, and then. Uh, you know, if I, I, I think about, you know, as an example, we've got a cricket test going on today in South Africa. And yes. South Africa has our backs against the wall and our batsmen go out there and they've got no choice. They've got to face that ball and do the best that they can. And, uh, yeah, as overwhelming as it is, you've just got to, every step of the way, you've got to do the best that you can and uh, you've got to back yourself that the, uh, 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 the sum of your efforts and your people's efforts and your partner's efforts are going to get you to where you, where, where you need to go. Just take it one day at a time or one ball at a time. Yeah, that's it. You mentioned a few minutes ago that you, you sought out a friend or a colleague to, to give you some advice, even if it was just to vent. Um, how important has actually having a group of people around you to, to help you out been? 
Um, it, it was very, very difficult at first. Um, you know, have, having come from a, a, a corporate background um, uh, uh, where, and being a person who it tends to be quite driven around achievement, it, uh, it was very difficult to ask for advice and help. Um, but uh, it's something that I learned along the way. And I think it's a very important thing for uh, founders to remember that um, it's okay to be vulnerable. Um, it, it's okay to ask for help because you can't do it on your own. And, you know, just you're referencing back to my, my son, uh, Finn, um, one of the great people that I've had as a, uh, let's call it a coach and a friend along the way, um, coached me uh, 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 around, you know, when we, when we needed to um, go and take Finn to, uh, to the US. Um, and, and he said to me, um, he said, uh, David, you need to do this and you need to ask for whatever help you, 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 uh, uh, you need to make it happen for your son. And I said to him, but you know me and I'm proud and I can, I, you know, I can make this happen. And he said to me, um, one day, am I going to be talking to your son saying um, he's had the positive outcomes that he has because his dad was uh, a, a, a vulnerable enough to ask for help? Or am I going to be saying things are tough for you now because your dad couldn't ask for help? And yeah, that's an example in my personal life, but it was a real mm. uh, lesson for me um, that people actually want to help you. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it's very seldom that uh, uh, human beings want other human beings to fail. It's such an important piece of knowledge to share, I think, with everybody uh, watching that, you know, this, this theme that vulnerability is not a weakness. Yeah. So one of the ways that I love to finish these interviews um, with all of the fabulous founders we've been speaking to is, is words of advice that you might have for other founders out there. So what, what would you tell other founders, particularly if they're you know, sort of struggling a little bit or finding it hard or maybe even just not, not sure whether to jump in and go and chase their dream? First and foremost, uh, determination and grit is your number one asset. At, at many, many stages along your trip, you're going to think you're going to fail. You're going to believe that you're going to fail. And uh, um, it, there is your, your personal grit is what's going to get you through. And, um, you know, I've, I've, uh, we were recently selected onto a, a scale up program. Um, and uh, one of the uh, coaches on the program was talking about what, uh, 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 what the market perceived as the path of their success, which was a curve that looked something like that. And he said, in reality, it looked like this. Yeah. Um, and, and, and at least twice, they, re they faced losing everything. And this is a, now a large listed multinational uh, a tech company in the financial services space. Um, and, and just, it's a little anecdotal, but it, this has really served me well. Um, somebody once uh, let me in on this um, kind of Mexican proverb. Um, which goes something like this. Uh, uh, if you lie by the river and drink tequila for long enough, the body of your enemy will float by. <laughs> and, and basically what, what that says is that yeah, a, a time on the pitch, time in the market is your greatest asset. So whatever you can do um, to, to stay in the game, you know, uh, 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 every day in, in, in the game, you're closer to your success, you're learning more, your product is getting better, you're getting more customers and partners that are going to help you on your way. Um, the, the, the second is people. Um, uh, and uh, uh, the way that you uh, choose the people who are going to work with you, your partners, um, it, you know, your fellow shareholders, investors, of course, the people who work for you, uh, but uh, also the, the, the people that you partner with. Those decisions, you know, in, in a high-tech world which is increasingly becoming more and more high-tech, it's still people that make the difference. People work with people. And uh, the, the third is family. Um, it, uh, those, <laughs> those nights where you can't sleep um, and you don't know how you're going to get through the next day, um, if everything goes wrong, uh, your family will be there for you. It's very important to hold them uh, in that way. And, uh, you know, they need to know while you're on this tough journey, 
uh, as exhilarating it is that they're at the center of, uh, of what you're doing and they need to feel as important to you as, uh, as they are to you. That's incredible advice. Or, or, uh, yeah. Thank you so much, David. It's been a genuine pleasure to learn more about you, more about your company Thank and you. the amazing work that you're doing here in South Africa and, and now across Europe as well. Thank you for watching. My name is Annie Parker and that was Source Code.